New Minister of Energy and Utilities, Conris Maynard, is calling on electricity consumers to be patient in the context of the unexpected need to perform electricity load shedding across the island of St. Kitts. The need to load shed occurred after the failure of a 15-year-old 3.9 megawatt generator, which is expected to take three months to restore to operations according to Skellix engineers as parts have to be ordered and installed. In a statement issued by Minister Maynard, he outlined a combination of factors including lack of investment, old machinery, maintenance issues with the power station operating just over the capacity level for peak time operations. He said decisions have been made to address the situation but call on consumers to be patient. He wrote, quote, This balancing act of lack of proper investment, insufficient available capacity, aging of some generators, false maintenance or delayed maintenance have led to frequent outages across the island. The latest falls over the weekend at the power station now requires Skellig to conduct load shedding exercises as efforts are made to restore generation capacity to at least meet peak demand. I therefore seek the continued support, understanding and patience of the general public in the circumstances as the new administration works with Skellig to address these critical issues in the short term and over the medium and long term." End quote. While the necessary repairs are conducted, additional standby generators will be rented and some purchased to allow for rotational capacity during the period, the minister informed. Then about reporting for SK Newsline. Your vehicle is very important to you. That's why you should ensure it gets the best service and care possible only at IAS Diagnostic Center, located at Bird Rock behind the Life Fitness Center gym. Come to IAS Diagnostic Center for wheel alignment, rotor cutting, AC servicing, wheel balancing, oil filter change, diagnostic, tire repair and sale, tinting, and much more. With top-of-the-line equipment, come to IAS Diagnostic Center in Bird Rock. Opening hours Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Call 767-4422-662-4416 or 466-6708. IAS Diagnostic Center for quality care of your vehicle. The SKN Newsline website now offers you more news. Log on to www.sknnewsline.com for local, regional and international news. You can also watch the latest newscast and keep abreast with news in sports, all from sknnewsline.com. That's www.sknnewsline.com. News at your fingertips. Smart and Island Electronics brings to you the Super Summer Coulomb Sale from July 21st until October 30th. Get, get amazing discounts on the widest range of gadgets, electronics, and appliances. But because it's summer, you get double discounts on all fans, refrigerators, and air conditioners. And don't forget to ask about our easy layaway plans. Good news for the people of Nevis. Smart Electronics is coming to Nevis at a convenient location just opposite Best Buy. So visit our stores at Smooth Electronics on Port Zonte and Island Electronics on Ford Street. Terms and conditions apply. Our COVID-19 protocols will be observed. Workers who were terminated from their workplaces for not taking the COVID-19 vaccine and who did not benefit from severance payment will receive some gratuitous payment from the government. So disclosed Cabinet Secretary Dr. Marcus Natter in the post-Cabinet briefing for this week. The Cabinet has approved gratuitous payments for employees who were unjustly terminated from their workplaces for not taking the COVID-19 vaccine and who have not benefited from severance payment. Further, a comprehensive review of the Protection of Employment Act has been mandated in order to strengthen the protection of workers. Dr. Natter also disclosed plans by the government to build two solar-powered desalination plants to address the water shortages in St. Kitts. To help address the long-standing water shortages in the country, the Cabinet has approved a project to build two partially solar-powered desalination plants. This project is funded by the United Arab Emirates, UAE, and is part of a renewable energy project for the Caribbean with similar projects implemented in Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, 
and the Bahamas. Meanwhile, the cabinet secretary disclosed all the matters that were discussed in the cabinet meeting. The cabinet received a presentation from the management of the St. Kitts Electricity Company, Skellig, and has immediately approved the purchase of additional generation capacity to enable Skellig to alleviate some of the load shedding that is currently being experienced by the general population due to reduced capacity at the Needsmus power plant. The cabinet has also agreed to facilitate the purchase of dual fuel high power density generating sets or gensets in order to resolve the problem in the long term. Notwithstanding these generator solutions, the cabinet continues to explore various renewable energy projects. The cabinet has approved the granting of economic cost to all nationals studying the University of the West Indies in all disciplines, thereby reversing a policy of the previous administration. The post-cabinet briefing further disclosed that the cabinet reviewed and discussed several significant investment opportunities which will redound to the benefit of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Premier Mark Brantley has confirmed that geothermal energy is back on track with strong support from the federal government to continue its development on Nevis. At a recent press conference, Brantley said he discussed geothermal matters with Prime Minister Dr. Terence Drew and indicated also forthcoming financial support from the Caribbean Development Bank. We would be using geothermal energy to generate electricity on the island of Nevis and ultimately using geothermal energy to power our sister island of St. Kitts as well. In fact, let me say that I have engaged with our new Prime Minister, Dr. Drew. We have met formally, but we've also engaged on quite a few occasions on the telephone. And I am impressed thus far with his commitment to renewable energy. I have also engaged with Dr. Senator Joel Clark, whom he has put in charge of the thrust for renewable energy, and we look forward very much to working with the new federal government in order to bring renewable energy to people's switches in their homes, to move it from just talk to actually manifesting itself in cleaner, greener, and of course, low cost energy. To give you an idea, while we are here talking about 65 cents and 80 cents and all of that, geothermal energy we expect should come in at around 11 US cents. So 11 US cents is about what, 28, 29 cents EC. So you compare that to 80 cents, which is just the surcharge. That is not yet the consumption. So when you add this, the consumption onto that, you're probably up to well over a dollar if you were to go the way that we're going now. Geothermal energy has been a long-standing desire of various Nevis Island administrations, but the development course has been a major impediment until recently. Glenn Buck reporting for SK Newsline. Smart and Island Electronics brings to you the Super Summer Coulomb Sale from July 21st until October 30th. Get, get amazing discounts on the widest range of gadgets, electronics, and appliances. But because it's summer, you get double discounts on whole fans, refrigerators, and air conditioners. And don't forget to ask about our easy layaway plans. Good news for the people of Nevis. Smart Electronics is coming to Nevis at a convenient location just opposite Best Buy. So visit our stores at Smart Electronics on Port Zonte and Island Electronics on Port Street. Terms and conditions apply. Our COVID-19 protocols will be observed. Your vehicle is very important to you. That's why you should ensure it gets the best service and care possible only at IAS Diagnostic Center, located at Bird Rock behind the Life Fitness Center gym. Come to IAS Diagnostic Center for wheel alignment, rotor cutting, AC servicing, wheel balancing, oil filter change, diagnostic, tire repair and sale, tinting, and much more. With top of the line equipment, come to IAS Diagnostic Center in Bird Rock. Opening hours Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Call 767-4422-662-4416 or 466-6708.
IAS Diagnostic Center for quality care of your vehicle. Online radio has never been this great. It's Voice of the Caribbean Radio at voiceofthecaribbean.net. Tune into Voice of the Caribbean Radio for great Caribbean programs, news, entertainment, sports, and current affairs. Wake up each morning and be inspired with One Day at a Time with Kim Huey. Stay abreast with news across the Caribbean and internationally with the Caribbean News Hour and be entertained with shows like Reggaeville, Caribbean Classics, and Jive Music Show. Visit our website, download our Android mobile app, or listen us on TuneIn Radio. There is so much more on Voice of the Caribbean Radio, reaching the Caribbean and beyond. Check website or app for program schedule. Auto Plus Car Wash, located on the Collins Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Bring your car to Auto Plus Car Wash to remove water stains, wiper marks, get your doors, roof panel cleaned, seat floor mats, buffet, headlights, and engine wash. You get quality service at the best price at Auto Plus Car Wash. They really care for your car. Call 765-5140 or visit them on the Collins Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Auto, Auto Plus, Plus Car Wash, where, where the service, service is, is number one. Can you believe all the ings we can fit under one roof? We're here to help your small business any way we can. Minister of Health Dr. Christopher Tufton is urging the public health sector to get into the mood of readiness after news broke about more monkeypox cases. On July 6, 2022, Jamaica recorded its first case, and within the last 24 hours, we have recorded two additional cases, bringing the total number of cases in Jamaica to nine. The cases are both locally transmitted and are from the parishes of St. Elizabeth and St. James. Madam Speaker, monkeypox is a rare cause, a rare disease caused by infection with the monkeypox virus. On July 23 of this year, the World Health Organization declared monkeypox a public health emergency that required international response. The health minister also magnified the importance of taking precautions. It is imperative that the public take due regard to the signs and symptoms associated with the disease that includes the following symptoms, fever, chills, intense headache, extreme exhaustion, muscle ache and back ache, swollen lymph nodes, and a rash that usually appears one to three days after the onset of the fever. He reiterates the disease is not affiliated with homosexuality. Though monkeypox is highly contagious, if manned properly, it can be prevented. Jamaica expects to get monkeypox vaccines this month to treat with the disease. Javin McLean, CVM Live. On Monday, September 5th, Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre disclosed St. Lucia's economy is projected to grow by 8% according to the findings of an economic survey conducted by the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean. The declan says that our, our economy is going to grow by 8%, 8.5%, which is the highest growth apart from Ghana. Today, leader of the opposition, Alan Chastney, in a press conference, argues St. Lucia's economy will not grow. He rather argues St. Lucia's economy is going backwards. So again, you don't need to be an economist to know that there's no 8% growth coming. The statement then went on to make reference to a survey done by the Chamber of Commerce. Now, this is the biggest joke. The survey that was done by the, the, the uh, Chamber was to find out if, in fact, companies have recovered from COVID. The Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean is a commission founded by the United Nations the economic survey reported St. Lucia would have a growth this year of 8%, the highest within the region. The region's economic growth for the year 2022 
is 4.7%, which is higher than that of last year, which was recorded as 4.0%. Despite the results of the independent economic survey, Chastney is adamant St. Lucia's economy is simply not growing. The expansion of the call centers, the fuller recovery of tourism, none of those things have happened. In fact, this government has gone backwards. Chastney also says businesses are not confident in the economic stability of St. Lucia. This statement came in response to the Prime Minister being confident in the higher development in Sabusha as well as other additions to hotels on island. What are you thinking about what's coming in the future? There's no business person that you can point to that's going to say that they have a great level of confidence that this economy is recovering. In fact, everybody sees that this, this economy is going in reverse. The ECLAC survey, on the other hand, projects economic growth for St. Lucia. In Chapter 1F of the report, the Commission attributes significant economic growth in the region to energy exporters like Trinidad and Tobago. However, in Figure 1.71, St. Lucia is shown to be experiencing more growth than the other members of the region, most notably Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, and Jamaica. John Tench, MBC Prime. President Putin says the sanctions imposed on Russia represent the biggest current threat to the world economy. Mr. Putin was speaking at an economic forum in the eastern city of Vladivostok when he said that the sanctions were a futile and aggressive attempt to isolate Moscow and they amounted to a declaration of economic war. The West imposed the sanctions because of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. After the pandemic, different challenges arrived that have also been global in nature and pose a danger to the whole world. I'm talking about the West sanction fever. Its brazen and aggressive attempts to force others on how to behave, deprive them of their sovereignty and force them into submission. There is nothing unusual about that. This policy has been used by the West for decades. Let's go live to Moscow, where we can speak to our Russia editor, Steve Rosenberg. Steve, welcome. Well, a determined and defiant speech from President Putin, as much, it seems, for a Western audience as his domestic one. Tell us what he had to say. Yeah, we just heard there, didn't we, Vladimir Putin accusing the West of being brazen and aggressive. Uh, I found that quite extraordinary. He gave a 35-minute speech in which he spent a lot of the time bashing the West, accusing the West... Uh, of trying to deprive Russia of sovereignty, blaming the West over imposing sanctions against Russia. And yet he made no reference at all uh, in, in that 35-minute speech to the reason why the West imposed heavy sanctions on Russia. In other words, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And that is a very good example, I think, of the the kind of alternative reality, the parallel reality that the Kremlin tries to create uh, around Ukraine. No mention at all uh, of the reason why um, the West has been trying to put pressure on, on Russia and trying to portray Russia as the innocent victim in all of this. And this was an economic forum. Um, who was the audience? Who is he appealing to? An economic forum indeed, but an economic forum very much focused on the East, on Asia. What, what Vladimir Putin is trying to do is to re-pivot his country, his country's economy, away from the West towards the East, to Asia, to Asian markets like China. A very, very big delegation from China was in the hall uh, today in, in, in Vladivostok. Now, how successful uh, President Putin is going to be and how quickly he can re-pivot things, well, no one knows, but he's determined to do so. And actually, he came across as someone who still appears to be supremely confident. I mean, the things haven't gone according to plan on the battlefield in Ukraine, but he still believes that he can get through this. The Russian economy hasn't collapsed. Many predicted it would. Um, things are going to get tougher, I'm sure, in the next few months. 
but he believes that he can restructure things and reorient the economy from the West to the East. And of course, in the meantime, the country has lost a lot of its energy import, exports rather, um, that were going to the EU, not all of them. But are they ma managing to make up for that and send them elsewhere? Do they have other customers, other clients now? Well, I think they're selling, um, for example, to China and to India at a discount. But uh, Vladimir Putin today said there was a, bu a budget surplus. So at the moment, uh, the money is coming in. And uh, President Putin talked a lot today about energy. Uh, he slammed the, the idea, which is being considered by some Western nations, of imposing a, a price cap on Russian energy exports as stupid. And he threatened to stop supplying oil and gas completely if a price cap uh, was introduced. OK, Steve in Moscow for now. Thank you. For all new Prime Ministers, the first journey to Parliament to face opposition questions has a big hurdle at the end of it. Liz Truss is promising help for millions of people facing high energy bills this winter. Here's Starmer. Yeah. Yet she refuses to impose windfall taxation on energy companies. Add it all together and companies that are already doing well are getting a £17 billion tax cut. Yeah, yeah. While working people pay for the cost of living crisis, stroke victims wait an hour for an ambulance and criminals walk the streets with impunity. I'm on the side of people who work hard and do the right thing. That is why we will reverse the national insurance increase and that is why we will keep corporation tax low. Watching on fresh faces on the front bench, all of them trust loyalists. Supporters of leadership rival Rishi Sunak from the last government have either resigned or been fired. The top tier of the cabinet is the most diverse in British political history, with not one male white politician among them. This cabinet is short on experience, though. But could it have new dynamics? Not surprisingly, Starmer doesn't think so. The face at the top may change, but the story remains the same. There is nothing new about the Tory fantasy of trickle-down economics. Well, there's nothing new about a Labour leader who is calling for more tax rises. It's the same old, same old tax and spend. Truss may have impressed her supporters, she did hold ground and seemed to keep her cool, but there was an absence of detail on what she's promising. And so on Thursday, Liz Truss will announce her energy plan, aimed at relieving the stress of millions of people in the UK with escalating bills. She knows it's a crucial card to play if she's to win back any popularity the Conservative Party has lost of late. Keir Starmer knows that only too well, which is why he persistently pressed her on asking who pays. She couldn't really answer. Andrew Simmons, Al Jazeera, London. Despite losing 5-1 to the Dominican Republic in the final match of the Under-17 CONCACAF Championship Qualifier on Saturday night, the Young Sugar Boys take pride in their overall performance in the competition. Coach of the team, Alexis Morris, said the players displayed organization, discipline and determination in the first 45 minutes of that match, which gave the Young Sugar Boys a 1-0 lead at halftime. And we saw that once we put all three into perspective that we would have been able to uh, capitalize on the shortcomings of the Dominican Republic team. We really sucked up the pressure for the time that we were out there in the first 45. We were well disciplined, we were well organized, we were very well determined. And as a result, we were able to get to the go-ahead goal, leading the first half some one goal to nil. Unfortunately, in the second half, the Dominican Republic team resurged with a new formation, Coach Morris explained. And as a result, we were able to allow the Dominican Republic team back into the game. Uh, we lost, as, a, as a result of that first goal taken very quickly in the second half, our guys continued to crumble under the pressure. And as a result, we underwent a 
5-1 defeat to the Dominican Republic team. I must say that the Dominican Republic team is a very well organized team, a very well put together team. However, Coach Morris was grateful for the progress of the team and the well-wishers from fans back in St. Kitts and Nevis. He also thanked the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association for giving him an opportunity to coach again in the national setup. It was good being back in the national setup after quite a long layoff. And I must also say congratulations to the parents, the support group, all those who rallied behind the team who have sent their support via text, whatever means they would have sent their, their, their support. We are grateful. Those of you who looked at the game and would have texted me after, giving me congratulations and asking me not to bow my head, but to keep striving for excellence is one of the things that I would have heard from, from persons back home. So I just want to say thanks to each and every one of you back home in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis who have, wished, who have wished the team well and for every success despite having undergone that loss last night. Coach Morris commended his players and thanked the backroom staff for their work with the team. The management team that travelled with the boys included Tashawn Francis, equipment manager, Alistair James, physio and trainer, Sienna Leader, manager, Thrizen Leader, assistant coach, coach Alexis Morris, and Duana Pemberton, team doctor. <music>